why can't Warzone truly be back, you know, taking the pandemic part out of it? So I think there's a couple different elements is a lot of people that started Warzone came back to the franchise that hadn't played COD in like a decade. That'll never happen again. <laughs> right. <laughs> You're not going to get this huge influx of new players that have never played COD in like forever. Um, so that's part one of it. Uh, and all those people that did, they've essentially become accustomed to the game the way it is now. And um, people's expectations and entitlement have changed a little bit too. I, I, I would bet $100,000 that if they give us exactly Warzone 1, exactly. Mm -hmm. No changes, exact same metas, whatever, whatever. People would still complain <laughs> like they do today. Yeah, 100%. There's no doubt. Uh, and uh, we see it even now because Modern Warfare 3 is pretty good. Like the, the version that we have right now in Warzone, pretty good. Besides the meta issue that's dry as hell, it's pretty good. But people still like, no, I want, I want to be, I want to spam L3 so bad to tax sprint. It's like, well, you don't need to, you get unlimited tax sprint, but I want a tax sprint, you know, it's <laughs> you know, I want a slide cancel. So I think there's that part of it. I think. BO6 is set up to be really good. The integration, what we played and what people saw, I think is going to be awesome. But there's a lot of toxicity in COD, so there's always going to be people vocal about how they hate it. No matter if in, during 2019, <laughs> Warzone 1, no matter what, there was always people hating the game too, and they still hate it to, every day. But they play it 8 to yeah. 10 hours a day. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm going to say four letters, and it's going to drive everyone absolutely crazy. S B M um players like me and i believe like you you know we're potentially around like a two or three kd so we're definitely um i mean i think i suck but i know that i'm like you know whatever three top three percent whatever it might be uh-huh um you know i think almost for us it's like the hardest because we're too good to be in a protected lobby but we're not good enough to be playing with some of the people that are in those lobbies What's the balance in SBMM? Can it ever be fixed or will people just, it will just be a constant battle? Uh, I think part of that is uh, the thing we talked about earlier where people just have gotten better. That is definitely part of it. Uh, but they're, but they put out their white paper. They essentially broke it down and the top 10% of players are impacted the most. Essentially, that's what it comes down to. The top 10% of players are negatively impacted the most. The other 90% of players generally benefit from it and the the benefit and con part of it is how much play time they have generally when there's less spmm on the the lower 90 percent, they play longer the top 10 percent, they play less that's just kind of how it is and 90 percent makes a lot more money than the 10 percent. even though those diehards buy everything the 90 percent is just such a a large number that they're protecting and I don't see them ever changing that because of that system. Obviously, people are going out of their way to circumvent <laughs> those systems. Yeah. Uh, and and as a double edge, I don't think there's really anything Activision can do to stop it because it's not against TOS. And playing with a friend technically can't be against TOS either. So <laughs> <Right>. it's like, <laughs> and I think they're kind of stuck between that rock and a hard place. It's just like the, the cheater problem. Uh, you know, there's another... A pocket of issues <laughs> yeah. there by having SBMM, the chicker, the, the cheaters are often going to be in that top 10%. So they are also keeping that out of the 90% of the player pool. Mm -hmm. So it actually doubles as a, a, a ricochet in a sense, because <laughs> it's isolating those players to the top. And that's why I think the top players generally going to run into them more often. And you segued perfectly into it. You know, how big is the cheater problem in, in Warzone or, or just Call of Duty in general? I mean, it feels like, you know, the the accuser channels, we'll call them, have died down quite a bit, which is good to see. But, you know, cheater cheating is a problem in Call of Duty. Um, how big of a problem is it? Uh, I, I, I mean, I don't know. I, I know I got quoted as saying something like 3% or something like that. I don't really know what the number is. I, I will say that the number is, isn't going to change. Like unless the anti-cheat changes, mm -hmm. uh, there's always people out there trying to cheat in some way, whether it's one way or another, they're, they're trying to cheat to whether they enjoy it because they get to ruin people's day or they just feel good about themselves. I don't know. The only thing that could really realistically change it is having a more invasive anti-cheat. 
but from people I've actually talked to, it doesn't sound like that would actually be the solution because the problem with that is you, by making it more intrusive anti-cheat, you actually actively limit the number of players that are going to play the game. You're going to cut people off. Uh, the example would be with Valorant, for example. That's like a hardcore player base. COD is hyper-casualized, mm -hmm. right? So it, the hardcore people, they have no problem getting invasive, invasive anti-cheat. They set it up. Boom. The ca COD casual, they're like, no, nah, I got to download some. No, nah, I ain't playing that. Sorry. I'll just move on to something easier to play. And even though it would protect them and give everyone a better gaming experience, the number of people that would play the game because of this invasive anti-cheat is probably a greater number. Maybe they've weighed the odds on Activision's end. They've weighed the odds to say that number's worse than doing as good as we can with the current situation to try and stop cheaters and people actively leaving from people actually cheating. Sure. So I don't know. That's at least my theory behind it. I, I really feel like it would be better if they could make it better without being intrusive. Um, and you you talked about COD Next. You just got back from COD Next. What was the general sentiment when you were there with other creators you were talking to on how the game feels, how we think the integration is going to be with Warzone? I think most people were generally happy. Uh, one of the feedbacks was, everyone was like, oh, multiplayer feels better than, than Warzone. And it's like, well, it's because you don't have your perks, you don't have your loadouts. So I think that was a little bit part of it because uh, the conversations almost go the same. Well, what perks were you using? Oh, I was using these ones. Well, that's probably why it felt better. Oh, I didn't even think of that. And it's like, oh, okay. <laughs> well, good thing we had this conversation. <laughs> but uh, but it's kind of one of those things where I think, excuse me, I think uh, generally it's received, it was received positively, uh, especially after the issue that we had with MW2 um, being such a bad, bad experience. People walked out of there with their head down like, oh, this could be miserable. I got clipped several times ranting about the game in a, in a very bad way. <laughs> and uh, it, it was what it was. MW3 has kind of done a little bit to regain some of the goodwill of the players, of uh, the feedback listening to. Besides the meta issue that we have in Warzone, uh, the game has generally been good. Multiplayer is pretty good. Modern Warfare Zombies wasn't supported, but what they did put out was relatively okay. And then going into this next game, I think uh, people are a little bit frustrated that we're not getting a new map, at least until Verdance comes back, which isn't a new map. But <laughs> yeah, you know, so I, I think generally people are positive, especially compared to the past two years. It's kind of just gone up and then up again. Omni Movement's gotten a lot of press. I don't know if it's the, the best thing about the new one. It's probably not. But, you know, a lot of people are talking about it. Do you think Omni Movement is something that will become part of, I don't know if calling it part of the meta makes sense, but do you think it's something people are going to use all the time or is it very situational where it's, it's going to be used, you know, once in a while during gameplay? So I would say that the, the, like the general Omni movement is going to be used like a hundred percent of the time because it's the sprint in 360, mm -hmm. you know, slide in 360. That'll be pretty, pretty common. I think um, the dive, it is very useful, but it does have its strengths and weaknesses. So I think that one will be a little bit more, use space uh it's not going to be like oh we, we spam slide cancel oh yeah we're just going to spam diving everywhere as we've seen with the beta the more people play it the less they're diving unless it's situational but they are definitely taking advantage of the omni sprint omni slide and utilizing that more and i think that uh especially after going back to some of the other cods between the beta like mw3 or even um zombies or warzone you, it's, it's hard. It feels slow strafing and going backwards. And like that part is definitely noticeable. So I think that is just going to be a core, core part of the game. The dive, I think other games could, uh, like future games, whether it's uh, IW or Sledgehammer, they could take different interpretations on the slide, uh, the dive. But I think that uh, the base Omni movement, I don't think that's going anywhere. I think that's here to stay forever. And you've talked about Modern Warfare 2 quite a bit. Obviously, big disappointment for at least um, a majority or a large majority of, of the player base, it felt like. Um, and, and you were vocal about that. You made videos about that. Did that? negatively affect your standing with with activision or any of the studios at all no <laughs> no well because uh, part of it is um I, I think i've done a really good job in general uh, of, of trying to be very vocal critical but not being really like an asshole mm -hmm. which i think that's part of the problem with a lot of creators get into they're like oh i can't speak my mind well you definitely can 
It's like saying cod is trash. That doesn't do any good to nobody. <laughs> yeah. Like, oh, it's trash because the spawns aren't good. The hit regs, bad. The connections, bad. You know, you can go down a list of things that are actually bad. Mm -hmm. And then there's actual feedback there versus... Oh, these devs need to go do something to themselves or whatever. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah you know, that, people yeah. get pretty crazy. But these are even creators that do these things. And they're like, oh, I don't know why I don't get invited. And it was like, well, <laughs> like, you know, it's not, you don't have to be a yes man. I mean, I was a, a terrible, like, I, I posted, like, basically I hated COD for two years. Yeah, almost. right. <laughs> <laughs> so I was like, I had no problem. And I got invited and I still get invited to pretty much everything. And I think that's the, uh, Having tact is, is really important. I think a lot of people tend to lack that, especially when it comes to feedback. Has there ever been a time where a dev or a studio hit you up and be like, come on, J-God? No. Or just they pretty much stay out of it? No. Uh, uh, sometimes, uh, like, some of the people might joke. Um, like, w one time they're like, oh, you're not going to play the campaign, huh? And, <laughs> because I made a joke saying, hey, if it's not early, I ain't playing it. Yeah, if yeah. I have the choice between multiplayer, zombies, and, and campaign... Campaign is not getting chosen. I don't care mm -hmm. if it's the greatest campaign of all time. Unless you give me quadruple XP in there, it ain't happening. Like, right. it's just not going to happen. And that's the way it is. And I was honest. But they made a joke, and it was clearly a joke. It wasn't like, <laughs> oh, yeah. screw you, Jay God. No, it wasn't one of those. So I think those things happen and where it's just kind of funny. But, you know, it is what it is. Thanks for watching this clip from Mimosa Brunch. If you enjoyed it, make sure to subscribe and check out the full interview right here. Right here, guys. Right here.